We want to start by asking you uh, to think back. It's been a year since the Stoneman Douglas very deadly shooting that happened. Um, how do you feel in general about safety at your <clears throat> school? Let me start with you, Ben. So at Buff State we have, there's a public walk that most of the students use when they're going literally anywhere on mm -hmm. campus. And all along that road and various other places, they have these emergency boxes. Mm -hmm. So there's the light that's on top of it and you can hit a button to get help wherever you need it. And I, I don't know as long as I've been there, but we had had talks about this like in classes and things like that. And especially because in Buff State, uh, stabbings are a bigger problem mm -hmm. than gun violence. So we've had, we have had since the shooting more discussions about safety and getting more awareness about what these boxes are for and how you can use them properly. But how do you feel about the safety of your school? Sorry, you did say that. Mm -hmm. I feel since that uh, the awareness has been raised, so I feel a lot more prepared about what to do in the event of something happening. Great. Destiny, how do you feel about safety in your school? I feel that my school is safe just because like there's a lot of public safety officers around campus and we have these things called like blue lights around campus. So like if you anyone need help, you could press that. And our buildings are only accessible by the students to swipe in. So So generally overall you feel pretty safe. Yes. Great. And Charles, what about you? Um, so as Angels, truly I, I feel safe no matter what. No, um, this was before any of the shootings and throughout the whole four years, um, me being in high school. And um, they, due to the awareness, they, they have uh, talked to us about the procedures and uh, like the lockdown and lockout situations as well. And as well as the Kimmore community as well, um, look, looks out for our students, and, and et cetera, yeah. So Ben, what specific changes has your school made to keep you and your classmates safe? There haven't been any particular large scale ones, just kind of uh, re-upping of the things we already had in place, making sure people are aware of the safety procedures uh, in case of an event, mm -hmm. and just making sure people know how to properly utilize them. We haven't had any major changes. Nothing specific. What about you, Destiny, in your school? Any specific changes have been made to protect you and your classmates? Um. I believe that it's the same as Ben, like nothing really specific, but I've noticed there's like uh, more security guards that like go around the floors and do nightly routines, even like 12 or 2 o'clock in the morning to make sure everyone's safe. Mm -hmm. Charles, what about you? Um, so already I mentioned the uh, lockdown as well as the lockout. So already we've had seminars and meetings on it, and especially they the um, officials had told students be careful what you post on social media depending on these lockdowns or, or lockouts as well. Let me uh, ask you now how you feel about shootings in general and do you feel differently than you did a year ago? Do you think, Ben, that a shooting could still happen at your school? That's kind of the scary part is because they keep happening so frequently it's like you never think it'll happen to you but at the same time you know how easily it could. So it's kind of always in the back of your head, at least for myself personally, that it could happen. And that's really scary to think about. No doubt at all. Destiny, do you feel the same way that there's this awareness that why not us, why not here? Yeah, just because um, I know actually just a few days ago, my friends and I were actually just talking about it, think about it like, what if someone can easily just get in our building and anything can happen? And just like, we were just even scared to even think about it. But you definitely have that awareness that it could be. And Charles, is it the same way for you at school? Do you, you know, feel that um, it certainly could? Well, with me, especially at school, I have the awareness, but I have no fear because um, any, any anything can happen in a daily situation. But altogether, um, be, being a St. Joe's Brotherhood, uh, we try and make sure that every student, no matter what background, um, is, com is comfort and, and, and we try to be there for them. Um, so we, it's kind of like a close community, I guess, and we, we, we kind of focus on helping one another. So. so you think it's kind of raised awareness in a way that everyone is maybe a little bit more plugged into their classmates so that you can maybe identify someone who might be struggling? Is that what you're saying? Um, no, it's it just um, with, with a lot of these shootings, it, it has showed a each and every one of the St. Joe students that, 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 that there's people who need help and, and, and that we have to be together as people. So that's basically just created more awareness for us being together, really. 
Okay. Destiny, it's been one year since the shooting. How has basically life changed for you since the shooting a year ago? I feel like it made me feel like I should be able to do something as well, even just like, even if I'm just a student and I entered college now, I'm like telling my friends, making everyone aware. I know in the beginning of the year, my college, like their orientation, we had like a lot of like seminars that the incoming freshmen had taken and everything just to become more aware. And I encourage my friends to like watch the news and stay updated and they encourage everyone else as well. So you haven't forgotten about this. You've made it a priority. Yes. Ben, what about you? How has life changed for you since the shooting a year ago? I think a lot of the activism that the students have done has really made a lot of people my age get a, a lot more aware and willing to look into these kinds of issues when normally younger people wouldn't get involved with this kind of thing. So at least with the people that I've known, it's a lot more talking about it, spreading awareness about it, actually looking and doing research about these kind of things instead of just saying whatever. So is it still at the forefront oh, absolutely. of your thought, yes. thought process? Mm -hmm. Charles, what about you? How have things changed for you at St. Joe's since the shooting? Uh, <clears throat> since the shootings, um, I've basically just been being able to tune in more with, with people in general, just being able to listen and understand what they go through and what happens in daily life, um, no matter what, what the person is going through. So it just g gives me the um, opportunity to tune in on what's going on and how can I be able to fix, um, I guess, the struggle. So you feel a part of being able to maybe help your classmates then? Yes. Like, tell me about that. Um, so feeling that I can help my classmates is, it's not just, um, just looking at them as a cla classmate, just looking at them as, as family. So, so with that, um, with family, you have to be there for family no matter what. And that's, that's being there for them, listening to them, motiv motivating them, um, creating awareness, talking, understanding, as well as listening. I want to dovetail off of something that you said, Ben. You talked about after last year's shooting, seeing some young people really step forward mm -hmm. on, on the national scene, really, and talk about their experience. Um, have you or have any of your friends or classmates um, been more vocal either on social media or in social settings about the shooting or talking about that in general? So a lot of people that I knew, I didn't understand really like where they came from on these sorts of issues. And then after this happened and the more gun control discussions started happening, I really saw where people fell on each side of the discussion. And it was interesting to see how exactly much more vocal people would be about it and how more willing they were to talk about it on any platform either, not just with their friends or if they were part of something like they'd go hunting with their family, they were much more vocal about supporting it or if they knew someone who was involved by it. Uh, gun violence, much more vocal about talking about it. How about this? So you saw people come out on oh, both absolutely. sides, really. Mm -hmm. uh, same experience, Destiny. Did you hear a lot more discussion about it and actually people getting politically active? Um, yes, because like even not just in my school, I've met other people and I became friends with them and I see them posting like their Instagram stories about the gun shooting, just like spreading awareness for everyone else as well. Great. Uh, let me ask you, you're at a, a smaller private school, Charles, um, is there a forum? Is that part of the regular conversation at your school mm -hmm. talking about, you know, political feelings in regard to shooting and gun control, things like that? Um, yes, uh, you, it goes from just talking about it and even in lunch class, I mean, in, in lunch room, we, we talk about either politically or just being human, really. So we, we talk about like what can we do to fix it? Um, what are some outcomes on how we can solve these problems and, and everything? And that wasn't a topic that necessarily you were you would choose to talk about before that shooting at Stoneman Douglas last year. Is that what you're saying? E, true. Yes. <laughs> ben, if you could send a message to district school leaders or elected leaders, what would you like to tell them about safety at your school? I think. Like how I said earlier, how it's always that you don't think it would happen to you. I think they kind of need to take the threat more seriously sometimes. I know at my high school we had security guards on duty all the time. There was always at least one or two that were there. And at, uh, at Buff State, that's not always something that you see. I know we have the squad cars going around, but I think that they, just being a little bit more aware of that. 
right. and how real of a danger it is, even though it seems like it's something that happened so far away and not in your neighborhood. Right, and Destiny, there was a big push after the Stone and Douglas um, shooting for your generation to get more politically active. Uh, what would you like to tell elected leaders or your district school leaders about the safety at your school? Um, <clears throat> so in my school, there are like a lot of public safety officers going around the school, but however, there are kids always walking around campus, and I know for like a certain building, I have to go to another class, I have to walk outside. So not just for like the resident safeties, but like for the commuters and the kids walking to the other buildings for classes. I feel like there should be more safety there as well, because like anything can happen, can just break that break out. Because like, of course, you need swipes to get into our building, but if people walk around campus all the time, how are they safe? Can you clearly tell those people that you say are walking around campus? Can you clearly tell that they are students and not uh, a visitor or someone who just ended up on campus? Not really, unless they have a backpack or if they play off a student, because you really cannot tell the difference, because there's a lot of kids walking a lot of times at the same moment, so you can't really tell the difference. So there's no way of identifying them, uh, a, a, a necklace or a hang tag or something like that? Unless they have their student ID, but a lot of kids keep their student IDs in their wallets or their pockets or in keychains. So unless you see them, mostly have a Kinesis keychain, or see their ID on them, that's how you know they're a part of the faculty, staff, or one of the students there. All right, Charles, what about you? There was a huge push for your generation to get politically active a year ago, and uh, wh what would you like to tell elected leaders or school district leaders mm -hmm. about the safety at St. Joe's? Uh, school safety at St. Joe's um, is, is improving well. We, we've uh, done the lockdowns and lockouts as well as uh, at a certain time, we've um, shut down certain doors and entrances for visitors to come through, et cetera. So uh, for elected leaders or, or, or political leaders in general, um, that, that uh, safety in schools are improving and that they, they should gradually improve as time goes on. You all mentioned that there have been changes or at least a heightened awareness. Is there anything, though, that you feel is not being emphasized enough? Is there anything that you feel either school leaders, administrators, or our elected leaders should focus a little bit more on? Is there anything that maybe they're missing or needs to be emphasized more, Ben? I think like what Destiny was saying, getting more people like in buildings or on foot walking around. Because at Buff State, I, whenever I see campus police, they're always in their squad car. Mm -hmm. I never see them walking around, and I do not see them at entrances. And I understand that we don't need to have a huge military presence on campus, but I think it would be encouraging to see them walking around as well, or at least on a bike or something. All right, good. Uh, Charles, what do you think? What, anything else you think should be emphasized more, whether it has to do with guns themselves or training or safety or even mental health, anything like that? Um, most slightly just, just, just mental health in general because you can have an everyday person that looks just like you, talks like you, but you never know what that person thinks, what that person is going through at home and what the person is going through in school. Really, you can have all the security in the world, but you don't know what goes on inside those walls. That's a good point. Destiny, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Anything else that maybe needs to be emphasized more? I leave mental health because like a lot of people do not see like mental health as somewhat like something that like needs to be assured and need to be readministered because like it is important like people are going through stuff on a daily basis and people don't know like what they're feeling or how they feel on the inside and just like something can like snap them off and like take them off so quickly that they can lead to something drastic. So a year has changed. I just want to ask all three of you, do you feel safer? Uh, more safe, less safe, or the same on your campus? On, on my campus, I feel actually more safe there. Ben? I'd say it's pretty close to what Destiny was saying. It's safer. I am more aware of what I can do in case of something happening. Charles, what about you? Safer, less safe, or about the same? Just about the same. It, nothing has really changed f since the past four years. Yeah. Clearly, it, uh, a lot of times it depends on the institution you come from, the size of it, and certainly a college atmosphere versus a high school atmosphere. There can be a lot of disparities there. But I think unquestionably you have all 
grown in awareness. But I think maybe a question we hear a lot is, do young people feel distracted? Are they more fearful than ever before? Or have you gained a different perspective? Can you talk about that, Destiny? I'll start with you. Um, I feel like some has gained awareness. And if it's like you see something trending on Twitter or Instagram, of course, you're going to retweet it or repost it. But some have not, just because, like, I know a lot of people do not watch the news. And I try to encourage them to watch the news. But to me, I believe that if we actually have, like, a younger audience on the news, like, now and just talking about it, um, they'll pay more attention. Like, I talked to my friends. They was like, yeah, if we had kids our age talking about it more on the news and if we see them on the news, then maybe we'll start paying even more attention to the news. Gotcha. Uh, what about your fear factor, Ben? How, how does it rate from where it was a year ago? Um, so at Buffalo State, I am a social work major. And one of the things we're doing in one of my courses, we're talking about every class we start out talking about what's happened in the news in the last week or so. And because of that, the people that I am surrounded by constantly are much more aware and active in this kind of thing. So I wouldn't say that we're more afraid mm -hmm. or more willing to discuss and do things about it, but that's just the group that I'm mm -hmm. being exposed to. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Uh, and Charles, what do you think? More fear, less fear, or about the same? Um, it's about the same, but in general, especially with uh, my generation, uh, you have some people that just talk about it without any action, then that you have people that talk about it with action, then that you just have people that are just bystanders to, to, to what's need to be fixed. Let me ask one final question too. I asked this last year. What is it like today to be a young person with social media and all the different pressures that are coming at you all day long? Destiny, what's it like to be a young person right now? Stressful. <laughs> just because like what you see on the internet is like everybody just feel like it's the picture perfect thing, what to do, what to wear, like how to look like and everything. And even the celebrities like try to like stress like it's not important about like everything that's on the internet. But like kids, no matter what, they are constantly on their phones, checking their Twitter feed, checking their Instagram feed, um, comparing themselves to others. And I feel like they shouldn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Ben, yeah. going from high school to college, is the perspective changed, or is your life still pretty much social media focused? It kind of changed a lot in terms of uh, what you're thinking about and what you're taking in. I think a part of the problem that uh, Parkland shooting has highlighted is young people trying to be taken seriously about these kinds of issues that are impacting us that historically haven't always impacted us and now that they are and we're trying to have a voice and we're fighting to be taken seriously. Ben, destiny used a powerful world that, word that it's stressful mm -hmm. being a young person today. Well, what about your thoughts about that? Being a young person, what's it like today? It's a different world than when Mary Alice and I were growing mm -hmm. up your age. What's it like? Uh, there's definitely a lot more external pressures coming from and then especially uh, going from high school to college it's a large transition to take into it's a lot more work so thinking about your future it has a lot more stress than I've had before. And Charles what about you what's it like to be a young person today with social media and all the different things that are coming at you in this new 21st century world? Well, well when it comes to me uh, I think that being a young person is, is just having is still having fun because honestly, no, with all the stress and boundaries in the world, you still find enjoyment in life. And um, da daily, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking barriers, so that, that, that's what I plan on doing. And um, just, just generally, uh, social media-wise, it just, just breaks connection between people. So I try not to be on social media a lot, but uh, when, when there's like a big news thing uh, on, I try and research it or go on social media as well. But other than that, just connecting with people, I just connect with people just by talking to them face to face. So it sounds like it's pretty positive for you with the social media aspect. Yeah. Very good. Interesting. All great perspectives. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It's been interesting to get your insight and to get your feelings. And thank you for being so open.